What's up, heathens? So today on our discussion with Street Preacher Joe, we are going to be discussing why Moses probably didn't exist. Also, we cover why Tacitus isn't a good source to establish historicity of Jesus, and why the movie Shazam is really great to use against this whole memory argument for the first Christians. If any of that interests you, please stay tuned. When you're talking about, um, you know, just because it was written, yeah, that's true. The only, it, it, you can't just rely it off of that one story, but that's why we examine the whole Bible. We examine everything to see, is this really valid? Is the story valid? When you have 25,000 ancient manuscripts of the New Testament of the Bible that line up with a 99% accuracy of one another in Latin, Hebrew, and Greek, and you have such a tiny standard deviation, that tells me that whoever wrote and copied the manuscripts must have done a really good job. When you see the book of Isaiah, the oldest Dead Sea Scroll that we've got, and then a, a copy of it 1,000 years later, and it's nearly word for word identical. They must have done a pretty darn good job recording uh, these things without twisting it. Well, no, so, they, they, they were, they were, I mean, they, they uh, codified the book of Isaiah pretty well, that, but that doesn't prove that, that you know, the, the Bible is true altogether. They codified the book of Isaiah. You know how many prophecies of Jesus are in that book? Well, yeah, I, I know, I know how many we interpret of them now, but I mean, like, well, like I, okay, the most famous one, the most famous prophecy of Jesus in the whole Bible is probably Isaiah fifty-three. He was wounded for our transgressions, our sins. Who else in history died for our sins? Who else? Not even Jesus. Other than Jesus. Only Jesus. No. There's well, okay, else. okay, but but going back to your scriptures thing, how how Isaiah was codified. I mean, in in that First Corinthians line, the the creed that you read, it said, "According to the scriptures, Christ died. According to the scriptures, he raised on the third day." That's saying that according to the the Septuagint, according to this Isaiah or or Daniel or whichever book you want to use for the prophecies, it says that he got his information from the scriptures. That's the only place. Other other than seeing the spiritual being that is Jesus, those are the only two places that he got his information. He didn't get his information no. from an actual person. He never actually places Jesus on earth. No, he's getting his information from the Holy Spirit. That's why he says when he gets it from Revelation, he's giving the credit to the Holy Spirit, who's the one who gives Revelation. And he talks about that. He talks about the Holy Spirit. So that's where Paul's learning from, because Jesus says in John 16, 13, the Holy Spirit will teach you all the truth. So Paul's giving okay. credit to where credit's due, is the Holy Spirit, not to any man. He's staying humble and sticking to the faith. That's what he means when he reads this. I find it strange how atheists think they can correctly interpret the book that they reject. Well, I mean, I feel like I can read the book and I can interpret it. It's just that we have different interpretations. Just like there are Christians among uh, among your side that disagree with your interpretations of the Bible. There there are some, yeah. There's there's some. Yeah, and there's a lot of denominations, there's a lot of people that go by the flesh. There's a lot of uh there's a lot of religious people out there. But again, ultimately, that's why it goes to what Jesus says, John 16, 13, the Holy Spirit will teach you all the truth. A lot of Christians don't even learn from the Holy Spirit. They think they do. And instead, what do they do? They go to people. They go to person after person after person. But the real true Christians, even back here in this day, and we have uh, other uh, we have other historical writings of some of the very first Christians were known to fast uh, for two days out of the week. Well, when you're fasting, they're praying and they're seeking the Holy Spirit to speak to them, to teach them, to talk to them. Now, um, I want to ask you guys, uh, you know, you as an atheist, honestly, what, what made you, what makes you think that all of this is just a fairy tale? Okay, so you're talking about the Bible? Yeah, you know the Bible. Well, not just the Bible. The Bible is 66 books. It's not just one book. So tell me, why are all these 66 books nonsense to you? Well, okay. For for one thing, uh, the the number of books actually varies. Like w with the Catholic Bible, there's actually more books in it. True. So I mean, True. for for the standard Bible that you're using, uh, which I'm guessing is King James. King James. Okay, so for the King James, um, I don't necessarily subscribe that it's fairy tale. Fairy tale is a very specific type of literary work, uh, but I do think that it is fictional. And I mean, there's several instances that show that it is fictional, ranging from like starting with uh, Moses. I mean, Moses was a fictional character. Uh, his entire uh, story about how he freed the, the Jews from Egypt is a parable and it's noticeably a parable. What? 
Who told you that? Uh, lit literature 101. Have you have you done any digging into what we found in the Red Sea? I've I've seen I've seen what's been found in the Red Sea. Nothing that that has been been purported to be evidence is actually evidence that links it to uh, Jews being slaves in Egypt. The number of spokes of chariot of Egyptian chariot wheels found all over the Red Sea floor from coast to coast during the exact same time period dated back as Moses is not indicative of Moses and the, the Exodus to you? No. I mean, for one thing, I haven't seen mountains and mountains, you know, of, of, of this evidence that you claim. Like I've, I've researched it before and I've found, you know, people that say, oh, hey, look, here's a, here's a thing that looks like a wheel. That means that Moses actually parted the Red Sea. And the it's, physics it's of, of the Moses parting the, the Red Sea right. doesn't make sense. Look at you twisting the facts, man. It's it's covering the coast, okay? It's covering from coast to coast the the all the whole sea floor of those chariot wheels with those specific number of spokes that were just during that time period. And ultimately, here's where it comes down to: if Jesus rose from the dead, everything he says is true. Period. He has the truth. He refers to Moses. He refers to Adam and Eve. He refers to the Old Testament scriptures and the Psalms. Everything I do, I follow what Jesus says. Why? He rose from the dead. When he rose from the dead, he proved every single word he, he has is true. This is why not one single atheist can ever admit that Jesus rose from the dead. At least there's some atheists that aren't sick enough in the head to say that Jesus never existed. You'd have to be oh, well, really You know, that's not fair to call me sick in the head to, to suppose that Jesus never existed. The, even, even credible atheist historians don't even reject at the very least that he existed. That's just an argument from authority. There's no solid evidence to say, like, I'm saying that there's no solid evidence that proves Jesus actually existed in history. The writings of Tacitus. Uh, those those writings are are not proof that it was Jesus. I believe Tacitus is the Roman one that talks about that uh, Crestus, right? Yeah, he he was the greatest Roman historian of all time. You're just completely blatantly disregarding that as, as a piece of evidence. I, I, I'm not I'm unsure of the title of greatest, but no, I mean I've I've I have a video on Tacitus. Uh, you know the the uh, the part in which you're talking about here is very um, ambiguous as to who they were talking about. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so heathens, uh, I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of supplemental information right here because I was not prepared on, you know, debating Tacitus or, you know, historical evidence uh, for or against uh, a physical Jesus existing here on this earth. Uh, but Tacitus is quite a curious passage for anybody that brings it up. For one thing, two fires had destroyed, uh, you know, any real official documents that Tacitus had to work with. Uh, but also, uh, not just that, of course, but there were three synoptic gospels around, uh, circulating around the time that this particular passage that Street Preacher Joe is referencing, which is Annals, Book 15, Section 44. Uh, he wrote around 109, so there definitely would have been an uh, already uh, Christ myth or whatnot in circulation that people were already believing. But regardless of both of those things, the authenticity of this particular passage is under some question. Uh, for one thing, no other works uh, recorded Nero actually torturing and burning Christians uh, uh, for the fire that's mentioned uh, in this. The Apocryphal Acts of Paul was written around 160 CE, and it mentions Nero burning Christians, but around the death of Paul, not around the fires that broke out in Rome. Uh, and the death of Paul was around 67 CE. And actually, it's not until Sulpicius Severus, uh, around 400 CE, that Christians themselves started to write about Nero persecuting them for the burning of Rome. Uh, also, other uh, contemporary historians that would have recorded that particular act would have been Josephus and Pliny the Elder. Uh, they were both in Rome around 64 CE, and they don't mention Christians being blamed or persecuted at all. If you are really interested in this Tacitus uh, portion here, I've got a link down below that's to Rational Wiki that kind of covers the reasons why you might not want to actually, uh, you know, uh, trust this uh, Tacitus source as being authentic. 
Um, not only because it wasn't until 400 CE that the Christians were, you know, talking about Nero persecuting them for the burning of Rome, but also things like Christian fathers didn't quote it. Tertullian um, demanded a citation uh, for the evidence uh, if it had existed. Um, and there's a lot, there's about 14 points as the reason why you might want to question it. There's also a questioning as to whether or not uh, Christus was the actual title given. Um, most likely it would have been Crestus or Crestos. Uh, Christus or Christ would have been a title, not a name. So there's a lot of reasons to question it. I definitely suggest going down below and checking it out. Well, because in the original writing, it didn't have an E or an I in it. Uh, it had Crestus. So did Pliny the Younger's. His, his must have been nonsense too, I suppose. Huh? Well, I believe Pliny the Younger was, I can't remember when he was around, but I want to say that the, there's, a, there's a lot of people that purport like uh, ancient sources as talking directly about like a, an appearance of Jesus or something like that when they're actually just relaying like the uh, beliefs of Christians. Okay, so so they're talking about what's going on at the time of Christians being persecuted and killed, right? But but although Tacitus was specifically about Christ being crucified under Pontius Pilate, but you're just mm, negating that. I don't I don't I don't know if if that's it. Like I've I've um, I don't I'm, know how many other people that were crucified under Pontius Pilate because that's what Tacitus wrote. Well, yeah, there were people crucified under Pontius. Pontius Pilate was a pretty was a pretty um, unforgiving were guy. Christus. Huh? They were named Christus or the Christ. There was only one. Well, no, well, no. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm saying that that the uh, peace that you're talking about, the peace and Tacitus that you're talking about, categorically does not prove that Jesus actually existed. Okay, <laughs> I think we're just going to beat a dead horse here if we just keep going back and forth on that. Well, no, that's fine. Um, like I, like I subscribe to the whole idea that Josephus, um, you know, the the big the big thing in Josephus is a later insertion. Uh, it was it was totally forgery? concocted. Do you think that was a forgery? Yes. Uh, every every atheist I've talked to says that too. So so here's what I notice amongst atheists: there's there's no there's no counters to the evidence. All there is is doubting, doubting, doubting. Skepticism, skepticism, question mark, doubting. There's never any alternative offered um, that's rational and sound, at least from what I see. You have no, I, the first I've, I've given I've given you rational things like that that pilot <laughs> crucified a lot of people that happened to be named Christus. That's rational to you? Well, no, I'm not. I did not say that. That's that's a bit of a straw man that you're levying at me. Okay. No, you, you just said that that Christus crucified a lot of people, and then I said that were also named Christus to refer to as the Christ. There was only one. Okay, so, well, I, and listen, I did not say that 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 he crucified a lot of people named Christ or Christus or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't no, say he that. He crucified a lot of people. I, yeah. Uh, but then I, I stepped in and said that we're named Christus or Christ because but that's there's, what there's, that's there, very there's no direct uh, like information or, or source that links Pilate to crucifying Jesus. Like, for instance, Pilate, we have a stone with his name carved in it, and we have several other people that mention him existing at that time. So that's how we know Pilate exists. But yet we don't have any records of a Christ being crucified or anything like that. Not to mention the fact that in the Bible, Pilate is completely misre misrepresented. His entire demeanor is totally a 180 in actual reality. How, I would imagine that the Roman historians, as they wrote historically and interpreted their leader, would most certainly have a different depiction of the first Christians at the time of that leader. So that, to me, actually makes sense. You see where I'm going? Um, now, when I see these, these New Testament writings, when I see the teachings of Christ in them, there's power in his wisdom, okay? There's power in his word. There's, there's, there's something supernatural in the deep wisdom. That's why he says, I am the light of the world. Do you think some of Christ's teachings are good, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's still just some teachings that people wrote? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? Do you think there's any authority in what Christ says in the Gospels as far as his teachings go? Oh, uh, authority from Jesus in, in the Gospels? No, I don't. I, well, I mean, I think that in the Gospels, I mean, Jesus is obviously the central figure. 
Uh, if if that's what you're talking about. His words, when you read some of his teachings, you know, like, for example, his Sermon on the Mount, do you think there's any type of spiritual authoritative power in those words or that it just it's something that somebody just randomly just totally came up with? Well, no, I mean, I, I don't think it's spiritual, uh, but I mean, I don't think that it was like, you know, somebody sat into a sat in a room and just started scribbling whatever the heck on 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 paper. And he came up with the Sermon on the Mount. I think that it was a it was a literary work that was constructed, if that's what you mean. A literary work. Well, yeah, like like a poem or no, like like a story, like, you know, it, it's like a novel. Uh, John Dominic Crossan, he's a Christian, and he actually has the theory out that the entire Bible is is a parable. Like, everything about Jesus is a parable, and you actually see the markers of parables in it. You see mirroring, you see metaphors, you see the rule of three all over the Bible. Yeah, that just because well, that, that goes back to what you said to something earlier. Just because you see all those things doesn't necessarily mean that that is the case, then. I could say that, right? I can use your argument, then. Um, well, now, I, I mean, I mean, yes, yes, you could, but at the same time, all of those markers, uh, you know, seem to indicate a parable. So what I'm proposing here is that it's more likely that it was a parable uh, or or a constructed story rather than it being a true representation of what happened, especially considering the number of differences between the Gospels, uh, especially considering the number of people that were around that could have actually just written it down right there while Jesus was talking. Like, it's very unlikely that somebody had, like, that kind of memory that was following Jesus around or there was some guy with, uh, what was it, an auto... Um, Whatever that really like, like there's there's one for a uh, um, uh, picture perfect memory, but there's also one for like a, uh, huh? Identic. Well, there's eidetic, but it's eidetic for hearing. I, I think that it's much more okay. likely they constructed it rather than somebody had like eidetic hearing in the crowd. You don't know that. I mean, I can go to a Bible study and really remember a lot of my pastor's main teachings and relay it pretty pretty closely. Um, and on top of that, you've got. Shazam. Are you are you telling me that? that 11 men died for something that they knew was a lie. So they concocted this story of Jesus, uh, made it up and then died as martyrs for their little lie that they made up their parable. Well, no, I'm not saying that they concocted it and then died for it. I think that the first Christians really truly believed that, that Jesus or the Christ was an actual figure that saved them. And so I, I don't think that they were dying for a lie, but also people have died for lies in the past. Um, I would also like to bring up real quick the story of Shazam. Have you ever heard of the movie Shazam? Yeah, refresh my memory, though. I, I, I was really young at the time. Okay, well, Shazam is a movie in which Sinbad plays a genie and helps a little boy out. Everybody remembers Shazam playing in in the yeah. movie theaters, huh? Yeah, it, I, I'm starting to remember now. Keep going. Oh, okay. Well, because it wasn't it wasn't the it wasn't Sinbad in in Shazam. It was actually um uh what what, what what's his name Shaquille O'Neal in Kazam. Okay. Everybody swears that Shazam was a thing. You look it up anywhere. Everybody's gonna swear to God. They will get the Bible out. Put their hand on it and be like, nope, Shazam was a real thing. Shazam never happened. It was actually Kazam. This is the Mandela effect. Mandela. Okay, I see, I see. So you so you're okay, so you're taking something that that I didn't care for at all, had no interest of whatsoever, and that was twenty years ago for me. And then I relate it because it sounded really familiar. Whereas you're taking that apple and comparing it to the orange of people who literally had miracles happen to them and heard this creed that started within years after his death and started following them. No, there I'm saying that memory is flawed. Okay, your memory is flawed for things you don't care about. If it's something that has a deep emotional purpose to you, there's people who will remember things since they're two years old, okay? Very, very vividly. I know them, I've talked to them. If something has a very strong emotional, deep impact on you you can really remember it very very well how, how do you know that what they remember is actually what happened 
Well, you have to examine it all for a whole, man. You've got 25,000 ancient manuscripts that line up with a 99% accuracy of one another. Hey, heathens, I'm glad that you made it to the end of the video. I know Street Preacher Joe can be rather migrainey. But to follow up with his last point here, I just want to say that people have forgotten plenty of things that were intensely important to them. There have been parents that have forgotten their children in uh, cars during the summer and thus got them killed because of, of the heat. And to suggest that those children weren't all important to those parents is rather disingenuous. I mean, for one thing, you don't know what they were feeling or anything like that. So I, I think that it's rather anecdotal and disingenuous of Shrew Pritcher Joe here for him to say that, oh, this was intensely important to them, therefore they remembered it perfectly. That requires a lot more faith than evidence. But anyways, heathens, if you enjoyed this video, go down below, hit that like button, leave me a comment. Also, if you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.